97.3 ESPN presents the Sports Bash with Mike Gill. It's time for Football at Four with Adam Kaplan. I have real confidence that our football operations uh, can once again create a dominant football team. Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios. It's football at four. And football at four on a Friday is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. A new one dropped this morning. You can get the Inside the Birds podcast wherever you get your podcast, and it's brought to you by Dr. Lyle M. Back for everything from skin care to cosmetic surgery. Go to ilovelyleback.com. Call 856-MAKEOVER for Dr. Lyle M. Back, proud sponsor of football at four. The Eagles need a makeover. Adam Kaplan is with us, and, of course, you have uh, a lot of information that our listeners are interested in hearing. So uh, on this Friday, we have heard and uh, learning new things. You have some more information for us. You guys at InsideTheBirds.com co-wrote a piece between you and Jeff Bocher detailing where things stand with Carson Wentz right now. So let's start there and get your take on Where teams around the NFL see Wentz in terms of a trade? Is do our teams now feeling that this is a strong possibility as opposed to, hey, it's a big cap hit, they're not doing it? Right. So, Mike, I'm gonna be with you guys on Super Bowl Friday here. So if you would have asked us about three or four weeks ago and said, look, I I don't see a trade happening. We knew Carson Wentz was not happy with the club, and by the way. Nothing changed. You know, when Doug Peterson got fired, you saw a bunch of these reports or opinions from national reporters saying that, oh, well, this will do it. Now Wentz got his wish. Well, that's not what happened. That didn't placate him. He, he, he had issues with the organization. This is not a secret. It wasn't just the coaching staff, particularly uh, Doug Peterson. And he hasn't changed his mind as, uh, as we understand it. So uh, you know, the, the Eagles have been having talks this week with teams actually last week as well. Uh, we, 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 I mean, Jeff and I feel like Carson's going to be moved. Uh, we'll get into the other things, but the, uh, the teams around the league guys think that, uh, they go seem motivated to do something. Um, I would say though, the teams that we, we've talked to, they don't, they're not, they don't say that the Eagles are shopping him per se heavy. Just typically like when the Eagles were going to move down of McNabb, they were, they were shopping him hard. I remember at the senior bowl, uh, hearing about, the Eagles were talking to teams about seeing what their interest level would be on Donovan McNabb, obviously 11, 12 years ago, but uh, this one's a little bit different. Uh, it's a, it's a very unique set of circumstances. One that uh, I really have not seen very much. A guy goes from being a franchise quarterback who just signed a, an, an extension uh, less than two years ago to a guy that um, they most likely more likely than not will be moving. Adam, at this point, do we have an idea of which teams could be interested. Yeah, Mosher and I believe, in fact, we know that the Eagles have talked to at least five or six teams. Uh, we've identified some of them. We put them in the uh, in our pizza on InsideTheBirds.com. We know they've talked to the Bears. We know they talked to the Colts. We know they've talked to other teams. Um, and as one uh, very high-ranking league source told us uh, earlier this week, it's in our piece, when you really look at the situation, and th- th- this team was involved in the Matthew Stafford sweepstakes, he said, look, he goes, I haven't talked to the Colts, but if you look at their situation and their cap space availability to take on this contract, they could take on two Carson Wentz contracts and still have plenty of money left over. They could have as much as $70 million under the cap, depending on what the cap number is this year. It- it'll be no less than $175 million, and uh, we-, we believe it's going to be more than that. So the Colts right now are pri- uh, primed to do it. And how about Chris Bauer, the GM, being asked today on the radio locally, um, you know, just about Wentz or a potential trade. He, he All he would say is there's no trade going out today for his team. That's all he would confirm. Is there a timeline to get this done? Everyone talks about post uh, June 1st or whatever is best for the Eagles moving forward. So what is the timeline? You know, it's interesting. Um, Hunter, when you look at it, they, they definitely would want to make get this done by third day of free agency when a significant amount of money becomes fully guaranteed on once his contract. There's a he has a we well, also has a fully guaranteed roster bonus of 10 million, which if wh- whatever roster he's on, whether it's the Eagles or the Bears, the Colts or some other team, uh, they that team would owe him that 10 million. So they're going to want to move him. If they're going to move him, they're going to do it by then. It, it won't 
go that long now. I do believe, though, I do believe it's going to happen soon. That's just uh, the sense that Moshe and I get and our information gathering. I'm not saying it's going to happen today or tomorrow, but we think, look, the Stafford situation, I was told last week, today's Friday, I was told last Thursday that Stafford was going to be moved within a week, and it got moved within two days. And how about that? Last Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, the news broke from ESPN that uh, he, he was going to be traded. Now, by the way, a trade cannot be officially completed until the start of the new league year on March 17th. Plus, any players in trade must pass a physical, but you can agree to a trade. As we saw three years ago at Super Bowl week when the when the Chiefs traded Alex Smith or agreed to a trade Alex Smith to Washington. Uh, Adam Kaplan, Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. And let's uh, break down a couple of things here. So if they were to trade Carson Wentz, let's throw that hypothetical yeah. into the mix. They have Jalen Hurts. Do they say, we have Hurts? Or does pick six now become a quarterback possibility? Or if they trade Wentz, are they looking to do what the Rams did for another team's quarterback and get that guy back in return? It's a good question. I, I find it hard to believe that they, it, that Hurts would not have competition, whether it's in the draft or free agency, whether, whether it's a signing or a trade. Yeah, I – well, first of all, they'd have to add two quarterbacks. If they trade Wentz, you can't go in the offseason with one quarterback. You have to have at least three when you go into your, your offseason. And the only thing is we don't we don't know what the practice schedule will be in May and June for the um, post-draft camps. Uh, would, you know, the hope is, although the commissioner didn't seem very optimistic this week, that um, that the players will get access to practice. But the hope is at some point in the offseason, whether it's June or May, that players will be able to get on the field because, boy, Jalen Hurts needs it. I mean, he only started four games. And – all, all, all young players, particularly second-year players or rookies, need that practice time, and he missed that time. So he, he certainly could use that. So, uh, yeah, I, they would absolutely add quarterbacks. They would add two, uh, whether, again, it could come in the draft. And then, look, if they, if they get a top of the pick in the top ten, remember Denver, by the way, Denver, uh, Denver was a team that uh, was involved, uh, was reported by uh, my friend Mike Clist from News 9 in Denver that uh, they were involved in the Stafford sweepstakes so would it surprise anyone if if george payton the new gm talked to howie roseman the eagles gm this week it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me in fact it would be an upset if it didn't happen so that's the thing here oh by the way the, the belief around the league is the eagles want more than a first round pick for wentz now i don't know where that what they would take in a first round pick would it be you know if they're getting let's say a pick from the colts and the bears who are in the 20s would they want something else would that be acceptable to just take that first round pick i doubt that based on people i've spoken to around the league uh I do wonder, though, if it's a team in the top 10, would that be good enough for them? Would they, would they back off of wanting more than a first-round pick? I can't answer that. Right, and and that's the the weird thing is, you know, they traded Goff away and gave two first-round picks up. Do we well, think, you know why? No, it's because of the $25 million. Right, but the, do we think because of the, the, the situation, if it's not like the Colts who can handle that, would the Eagles have to give picks up for a team to take Wentz? Do we feel yeah, like it's gotten that. to that point? I, I, look. Look, Mike, I'll be honest with you. I was I, I didn't know that Goff was going to be included in the trade. Uh, that that did surprise me. I, and I know, look, Detroit, the, it's a very unique situation. The the new Lions GM was the, the Rams scout, college scouting director, so he knows Goff. He scouted him. That's why he was willing to take that $25 million. And by the way, the looking at the uh, Goff contract a couple days ago, the, Rams, the uh, Lions could get out of the contract easily without owing him a dime after year one. Hmm. So we'll, we'll see where that goes. But – yeah, I've not heard that uh, that the new team, if the Eagles do trade them, with if they do if the Eagles do trade once, would would uh, would want the Eagles to take a quarterback? Because first of all, what's Drew Locke? By the way, if you, if it was Denver, what's he going to yield? I mean, not not very much. Um, you know, you look at the Colts. The Colts only have one quarterback under contract, Jacob Jacob Beeson. Uh, the Bears only have one quarterback under contract, Tada Nick Foles. So this is all for twenty one. By the way, that's where that that's where those teams are at quarterback. Are you surprised with the interest around the league? I mean, yes, he won the he would have won the MVP in 2017 before the injury, but he was awful last year. And I just I don't know. I mean, I understand why people would be interested, but I'm just curious if, if you find it fascinating with how quickly this might be all coming about. Yeah, Hunter, here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing with Carson Wentz, and it's it's a good subject. Carson Wentz is still a highly respected quarterback. He's 28 years old former second pick overall. And by the way, he's not been on the injury report the last two years. I think that's been lost on people who've said he's injury prone. He did obviously get knocked out of the playoff game by a cheap shot by Judevian Clowney last year, but uh, he's been actually pretty durable. And he, he got squashed this season. As you know, he, he got hit a lot. Um, but look, 
He got benched. And that's the key point here that we all have to understand. Carson Wentz was benched. And that's why, to me, he's just not the same quarterback. You, you, you know, if you get him, if you're, if you're Chicago or, or the, the, the Colts, that I, I would probably put the highest probability if he gets traded, these would be the teams to get him. You have to trade him, or you. I think you have got to trade him, guys, where somebody knows how to coach him. I'm not saying he wouldn't go to Denver or some other team, but in Indy, you got Frank Reich and, of course, Press Taylor. In Chicago, you've got John D. Filippo, who was his quarterback coach for two years in Philly. I, I, I find it hard to believe you're going to bring him in where you're giving up a first round pick potentially, and you don't quite know what you're getting for this player. You, you, you know, you can't get access to the player, you can't talk to him. It'll be tampering. So, We'll see what happens. I um, mean, I've been surprised before, but uh, you know, th- this thing is um, come together pretty quickly and the Eagles have had conversations le- easily for two weeks here. And um, I-, I would be very surprised if this, this doesn't get done within the next week. Uh, you could see Adam's story. If you're watching on uh, the stream, you can see the inside the birds pieces up on the screen uh, right there to kind of get a deeper look at it. And it kind of chronicles Adam, why the Colts, seem to be the likeliest partner. Everybody keeps saying Colts, Colts, Colts. It almost seems too good to be true or, yeah. you know, it's well, one of those things where, yeah. so can you kind of detail for the people who aren't watching and are listening on the radio, but if you're watching the stream, you could see the article, why the Colts make the most sense. Yeah. So this, this uh, very high ranking, um, ranking uh, league source who was involved in the trade talks last week, his team ultimately did not get Stafford said that, they did a study on all the teams looking for quarterbacks, and they noticed the Colts had the most cap space. That was the one thing that stood out to them other than the, the need, because remember, Philip Rivers retired. They, the Colts were going to bring him back if he didn't want to retire. It just made a lot of sense to them. And this, this source, this guy said, what did I think? And I said, well, Frank Reich's there. And, uh, and we know about Press Taylor's relationship with, with Wentz, but Frank Reich is everything. He got remember he got he was the reason why Philip Rivers was coming to Indy. That he was the reason. That was the only reason was Rivers, and he wanted his his guy who he had uh, when he was the offense coordinator with the Chargers. And now you've got this relationship with Carson Wentz. We know how close he and Frank were. Uh, I was told by a couple of Eagle sources he was like a big brother, almost a mentor uh, to him, almost a confidant, uh, because you know. Frank was a sort you know an older player, a former backup quarterback, journeyman, but one of the best backup quarterbacks in his day, and he developed this uh, relationship. And remember, Frank Reich was on that caravan in 2016 when the Eagles flew out west. Uh, Tom Donahoe, Howie Roseman, let's see, it was Jeffrey Lurie, uh, the quarterback coach, Di Filippo, uh, Reich, the OC. Uh, there were like six or seven people in that caravan. So look, they. They all know about Carson, and Frank Reich, obviously, better than most, knows him even better. Um, it's funny because uh, some people have thrown the Bears into the mix here. They're in there. They're in there. You you just mentioned them as well, but the Bears being in the mix would be a situation. They wouldn't ask for Foles back in return, right? I don't, I mean, I, here's two things with the Bears. They got a cap issue. Okay, that that Not that cap issues in today's NFL are fairly easy to alleviate. No, they're, when I say that, you have to you have to either cut players, extend players' contracts to to lower their cap numbers per year, or um, you know you 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 restructure because you go to the players. The Eagles do this every year that create cap space for now and in the future, particularly the the, the, the current year. Uh, they ask them not by the way not every you don't you could you could uh, tell the team to get lost. You don't have to do it. Uh, you know I never have said no, but that's the way you do it. Usually, more often than not, it's not a big deal. Uh, teams are able to do this. But if you look at the – see, the, the Colts situation are stable. They don't need to do anything right now in terms of uh, getting a veteran in because they're a really good football team that no one's getting fired, whereas the Bears situation, folks, I mean, they might be out. They might be out uh, after the season. I yeah, mean, they're no guarantee to – I guess we'll just be keeping our eye on uh, those couple teams, Bears uh, and Colts, as you mentioned, and wrote about it inside the Birds – Dot com, but uh, you said you do. You're at the point now where you do think this will happen, and people around the league think this will happen because there are, you know, you get guys like Andrew Brandt who have worked in the front office and said, "Look, you can't trade this guy because of the dead cap hit." Is that mindset changing around the league? Here's the thing: I was talking to a GM this week who hates dead money. It's 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 it's, it's really insulting the way the guy looked at. It. He says, "Here's the deal." 
you never want to have salary cap space, a significant amount over 33 million taken up for guys who no longer on your team. Yes. It's spent money already, but that's not the point. The point is part of your cap, which, which is accounted for, for guys, not on your football team. It's painful. You hate it. You know, taking a cap hit of three or 4 million is not a big deal. Taking a hit of over 33 million is a big deal. And this GM said to me, uh, why he wouldn't take on Wentz. So this, this team definitely needs a quarterback. He's like, look, I just, we're not, we're not, he goes, first of all, we would not take his contract as is. We would want it, we would want it redone. And there was that ESPN report, by the way, I think in December that said that, uh, I think my, my good friend Chris Bortson said that, um, that Wentz would be open to having his contract redone and his agents would be open to helping the Eagles get, you know, get, get this moving. And the Eagles, by the way, they have a very good working relationship with Wentz's agents. They've had, at one time, they actually had eight, eight players on a coach on the, on the Eagles staff. So, um, yeah, I, it's a situation you, you don't, you don't want a lot of dead money. You could take some, but you don't want a big dead cap hit. But when a player does not want to be there, which I strongly believe is still the case, I mean, what are you going to do? It's like, what are you going to do with Deshaun Watson? Now, that's a little bit different. There's major acrimony. This is, you know, I, I post this on Inside the Birds, our, our, our podcast today. I think this is somewhere between a divorce and a separation. I don't think it's a very, very bad one. I don't, I don't see it like that. If you do take on Wentz's dead money, how does this impact, you know, like Alshon Jeffrey, Deshaun Jackson, Malik Jackson, all these other well, guys? Are co- caught, yeah, we're expecting them to not be on the, the team this year, whether it's they're cut on Monday. You can start cutting veterans or in a month from now, uh, Hunter, they're not going to be on the team. Most likely. But there's dead money with those players as well, correct? Well, I'm sorry. There's dead money with those players too, yes, correct? Yes, and they, they have post June one, which is a, what, what what post June one means. That means you don't you don't have to wait till June one. You could cut them on Monday. What it is is you have you, the league put in the CBA years ago with a, a contract negotiation, probably over 20 years ago with the the NFLPA. It was actually the PA's. They they asked the NFL and said, look, if you guys are willing to do this now, willing we're willing to help you with the cap, and both sides agreed, so you can split the cap hit over two seasons instead of one. And that's that's why those contracts will 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 be alleviated by post June one designations. But the problem with it is you have to carry the cap hit fully until June one. On June two, you could split it up over two seasons. Uh, Adam Kaplan, uh, we haven't heard a lot about Lane Johnson. You have some news. Yeah, so he had ankle surgery, as you know. I'm told that uh, he's doing really well with it. Within the last two weeks, he's either supposed to ditch that, hit a motorized cart. Uh, or he's close to doing so, and uh, he feels that, that it's fi- it's going to be good as new. Uh, he's not done his rehab yet. He's still rehabbing, but he he feels like it's great. The surgery was really, really good. Because remember, that, that tightrope surgery, which he had, uh, which we first reported back in August on our show, um, that's the one Tua had, and Jalen Hurts also had it. It's a, temporary, it's a temporary surgery, and Lane came back from it too quickly, and it, his ankle was never right. And remember, Lane said he sh- the ankle was shattered. But you really haven't heard something before, so that's something. That's some. Look, this is good news that he should be okay, barring a setback. I, I don't know when he'll be on the field per se, but I just know that it's it, it, it's going pretty well for him. Yeah, and I know that um, you know. Look, the Eagles' offensive line was a mess last year, and getting Brooks. Now Jeff was on with us earlier in the week, maybe it was last week, and he kind of suggested that there's a possibility they could do something with Brooks. Do you see Brooks on this roster next year? Well, they own 10 million. Uh, we reported last March that they own 10 million, whether he's on the roster or not, 10 million of his salary is fully guaranteed. So, I, I mean, he's coming off an Achilles surgery. I know he's been incredible coming back from injuries. I, I don't, I mean, I, I fully expect him to be on the roster. I mean, okay. I, I mean, the only way they would do it is if they'd someone wanted to trade for him, but well, that's what we suggested that Roseman might say, look, here's a, yeah. a contract I can move out of here. Right. The clear money. Right. Cause they got, look, they have a, and, and quite frankly, I've, I've been on this, this thing. Like I would do what the Ravens did after they won the Super Bowl. I would make some painful decisions. These guys that you absolutely love. I would just move on from, I would go super duper young. Jeffrey Laurie, not put pressure on the front office or the coaches, just get young, rebuild this roster coach him up, and over a three-year period, put together through the draft, not through free agency, a great roster, which you could be proud of. Uh, Adam Kaplan's pick for Super Bowl 55. I've got it. Buccaneers 24, the Chiefs 30. 30-24, Kansas City. All right, so Sal Powell 27-23, 30-24, Adam Kaplan from InsideTheBirds.com and the Inside the Birds podcast. The latest one is out. It dropped this morning. Apple Pods, Google Pods, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. And, Je- uh, and Adam, 
Uh, moving forward off season, what will the inside the birds uh, schedule be? Yeah, so we're gonna do we're gonna do um, we're gonna do off season roster shows. We'll explain the June the June first rule. I actually have it in my email because people sometimes don't understand. There's some specific rules which we'll explain, but what I explain is absolutely the truth. It, it's just about you could split the cap, but they have to be held on your roster for a certain amount of time. But um, anyway, so we'll explain that. We're going to go over all the contracts starting on Monday. Um, and we'll do, we're going to, the schedule will be Monday and Thursday at 6 a.m. Eastern. And we're going to do a roster show. So the next six weeks are all devoted to free agency and roster breakdowns like no other. And then once free agency, as you know, is not like the NBA, it's over in like two days. So once that we get that behind us in the third week of March, it's all draft, nothing else but draft after that. Great stuff. We look forward to that. Mondays and Thursdays, 6 a.m. will be the off-season schedule for Inside the Birds and football at 4, all off-season, all the way through. And then, of course, uh, we will see the draft and where that all goes. Looking forward to it. Adam Kaplan, InsideTheBirds.com. Adam, enjoy the big game. All right, guys, thank you. All right, there he goes. And he, like August, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Football at 4 is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast and brought to you by Dr. Lyle M. Back. For everything from skin care to cosmetic surgery, go to ilovelyleback.com or call 856-MAKEOVER for Dr. Lyle M. Back, proud sponsor of Football at 4.